I have been dying to do a video on nonprofit financials. I think it's a super important aspect of the sector, but I'm a nonprofit coach and I know a lot about fundraising and a lot about nonprofit marketing, but probably just enough about nonprofit financials to be dangerous. So I figured I'd bring in a specialist to talk to you today. So we have Rachel Peterson, who is a certified nonprofit accounting specialist, and she's here to talk to us about the nonprofit chart of accounts in particular. So with that, let's welcome Rachel. Well, I am so excited to have you. I got to know you on social media and I love what you're doing. So I thought I'd bring you on because I uh, I had said in the intro, I know enough to be dangerous about nonprofit accounting. So I think we should probably talk to an expert on this. And we're going to talk about specifically the nonprofit chart of accounts. So why don't we start for some of our, our newer uh, fundraising professionals, what is that and how does that work? Yes, the chart of accounts is just the framework for all of your financial statements. So it's not necessarily specific to a nonprofit versus a for-profit. It is when you're talking accounting, that is the basic what makes up everything we do in accounting. Okay. And what in particular is the significance of it for nonprofits then? You have to have it in order to do any financial statement. And so what's, what it's made up of is the revenues, expenses, assets, liabilities. So you get an invoice. What is that? Where does that go? And that's what it helps you do is classify every single thing in your business that comes in. Okay. Well, I know that you have got a template for our subscribers, which I will link in the description. I think that would be most helpful for them to understand what are the key components of it. Yes. Yes. And every nonprofit is a little different. Some have a lot of grants. Some only do contributions. Some have membership fees and so, or fundraising revenue. Some have zero. Some have a lot in that PDF you will see different examples of what you what your chart of accounts would look like. Okay, so when I'm working with clients and I ask them for what is their revenue for say events or if I'm looking for grant specific it helps identify those areas to make some data driven decisions. Exactly. Yep. And it just breaks that down. I've seen chart of accounts that are a nightmare to work with. And there's a lot of fear associated with chart of accounts sometimes because it's this unfamiliar thing to work with. And really it's just breaking down every part of your business. And one of my biggest things is when I work with nonprofits that have say 200 line items, it's not consistent. They can't say, oh, this is a, like they have contributions, but they'll have contributions categorized into four things. Really, all you need is individual contributions and corporate donation, corporate contributions, not six different ones, because sure, one month that was applicable, but it's typically not applicable year after year. And that's what we're trying to get down to is how can we look at things year after year and see it consistently and see the differences and see where we need to improve things. I know I've worked with one nonprofit in particular that was a mess. And then the process of streamlining everything and, and getting everything perfect. Um, I had a lot of kickback from them because they knew it was going to be a lot of work. It was going to change everything. But what are the benefits to simplifying it? Oh, so many. <laughs> um, I think the biggest one is peace of mind. When you go into your accounting software and you see a big mess and you know it's not right but you want it to be right but say the past executive director was doing it and doing it themselves and it wasn't consistent sometimes they put things here sometimes they put things there and so to go in and look at it your grant revenue say it should be a hundred thousand and it's only seventy five thousand you're like oh, there's a grant missing where did it go where did we classify that and if you don't have processes in place you can't see those issues you can't fix those issues because it's not consistent it's not time over time the same process being followed 
That was going to be one of my questions is what are some of the best practices and processes that nonprofits could follow? As an accountant, the one overarching thing that um, is taught is gap standards. And those are generally accepted accounting practices. And they're just a set of accounting principles that every accountant is governed by. And so that is how a chart of accounts is set up is following the gap standards. Um, two that I would, um, I guess, highlight here are the consistency principle and the scalability. Um, so when setting up a chart of accounts, you want to do it so that it's consistent. You time and time again, you can say, this is a contribution. And one example I have is office supplies. Um, I get clients all the time that have office supplies and then a printing ex account. And sh maybe you're spending $1,000 printing materials, but in today's day and age, we just don't have that much printing. Maybe you're printing for a fundraiser, but that is going to go into fundraising expense, not printing. And so one that I always go and I look at is office supplies. I don't want six accounts under office supplies. I want, say, your anything that is kind of one-off. You went to Staples and you needed something. You went to Walmart and you needed something. Yes, you could create different expense accounts for each of those, but in reality, you don't need to track it and it doesn't actually help your financials. And that is what we're trying to accomplish is a big picture of where things are going. Not, oh, I went to lunch with this funder that wants to give us money. Where should I put this? Maybe I should create a new account. No, just put that in mills. It doesn't matter. It Yes, or put it in fundraising. Um, but setting up how you want to classify things and not changing or varying from that is the most important practice within that. And speaking of putting it in fundraising, I know that a lot of nonprofits really want to keep their cost of the dollar down on their fund development. So what are some ways that we could, what are some different accounts that we can use for, you mentioned printing. Could we put printing in office supplies and meals in meals rather than fundraising so that we can keep that cost on the dollar down. Yes, because it's an admin expense. You have to do those ad administrative tasks in order to operate. And so I would say 100%, if you're concerned about your fundraising budget, put things into ad admin where those you're, when you are billing for a grant and they say, they'll give you a certain percentage. That percentage covers a meal with a fundraiser. They they expect that, they want that. And um, so don't, don't hesitate to put things into admin and have it be covered by donations. Yeah, I know as a, as a, a donor myself, we have a charitable foundation, a family fund. And uh, before anyone applies, it only supports domestic violence and addictions here in Canada. But uh, I look at the financials and I don't want to just see the annual report. I want to see the audited financials to be able to make decisions and, and see how are they spending their money and are they organized? And you can tell a lot by an organization in terms of how organized that their financials are versus how organized they are as well. Yes, it, it speaks so much to an organization. And what, what nonprofits, a huge thing that they differ in is everyone can see their 990 every year, where a for-profit, you don't see the financials ever. The tax returns never get seen by the public unless you're publicly traded, and that's a whole nother thing. <laughs> but for a nonprofit, no matter how small you are, your 990 goes into a public database and anybody can look at that. And so if you want funding, you have to have a solid foundation of financial reporting or else I th donors really struggle to give to you because you're not 
prudent with your funds. You're not doing the doing like tracking things correctly. Okay. Now you mentioned 990. We should specify Canadian or American. <laughs> American. <laughs> yes, yes, we have a lot of issue. Canadian. We have a lot of Canadian subscribers as well, but mostly American. Yes. So that's good. Just just for <laughs> Canadian when people know that uh, there's different resources that yes. maybe that's a good idea. I'll um, look for some other resources as well. And you had mentioned the gap. Is there any links that you can supply me that we can put in the description for that? Yes, definitely. Okay. All right. I know that a lot of our subscribers are founders and they're doing their own books. And this is one of the areas that, that they struggle in. So any other advice you would give to someone who started a charity and managing their own books? Yes. My biggest thing is simplify. If you have a chart of accounts that you're just overwhelmed with, that you don't use accounts, simplify, get rid of them merge them. There's so many options and software makes this so easy. But if you're constantly wondering, oh, should I put it here? Should I put it there? Make it one account. One example is dues and subscriptions or software and subscriptions. Lump that all together. There's no point in saying, hmm, where should I put this when it doesn't matter. You need big buckets to actually function. And um, the one other thing I would say is one of my favorite quotes, which I will paraphrase, is nonprofits rarely fail because of their mission or purpose. They fail because of their policies and procedures are not in place. And that's what I've seen. And as sad as it is, without those policies, without those procedures, you just can't make it because you don't know where your money's going. You don't know where what's actually happening in your nonprofit. And so I'd say take the time to make it happen, make it a priority and go chase your mission. Yeah. Yeah. Now would be the time to do it before, before the growth and before the next level. Now is the time to do it. I think your template will be most helpful. So that that's wonderful. Yes. Okay. Well, thank you so much for this. I have been dying to do a video on this. I just didn't want to overstep my role, <laughs> considering that I'm more on the fundraising and marketing end of things. Uh, and my husband does my books, so I have, I'm clueless. <laughs> well, I'm so glad you reached out and so glad that we were able to make this happen. Uh, as a nonprofit, I think it's so valuable for people to hear these things and and to be able to see what's available. Perfect, well, thank you.